Is the faking injuries thing a big deal to you? Do you find that to be as uh, as top of mind in terms of what we need to change about college football? Uh, I think targeting would be number one priority because I think you see the most, and I think it's the one that's just incorrectly like judged, like to see a player get tossed out of a game for when you see it in replay looks like a normal tackle, but the receiver running back ball carrier, like ducks his head at the last second to, you know, absorb the blow and the player gets ejected. That would be number one of mine. I think college football fans get most frustrated by the targeting rules. The the faking injury one I do think is worthy of looking into, and I actually like this approach with it because I don't think you can ch- you can't question somebody's injury status. You just can't. I mean, as, as a broadcaster, I remember that being the one thing uh, you don't try to guess what it is, how severe it is. So you can't really do that, even though we've seen like there's been video where you can see the guy look over, gets the signal and grabs his hamstring, you know. But even then, like just the worst case scenario if something happened and you were wrong about an injury, it could look really bad. So I actually think this might be the only way you could do it. And I know there have been a lot of different proposals. We'll keep them out for the drive. Uh, you know, keep them out for several plays, whatever the penalty would be. Right now, it's just one play. Like if you right. go down with an injury, you have to spend the next play out and really your team gets an injury timeout. Wasn't there also the suggestion that for you could buyback. remove? Yeah, you could like remove a timeout from a, a team if you think that faking injuries was how they got it. But they've ultimately, as I understand it, stopped short of anything other than a review process and punishment that would come from the conference office. So... All right, real quickly here. The the, the the measures they're proposing are unsatisfactory to college football fans and media and viewers, but we're not the ones who are trying to take over the governance of the sport, like Dennis Dodd told us on Thursday, might be happening sometime down the road from some of the Power Five conferences. That's why they have the whole transformational committee going on. So we're not going to get sued over head injuries, like they're apparently spooked about you know getting sued over which may be for good reason. Uh, These measures suck for the viewer, uh, but I totally understand why they don't want to institute a targeting one and targeting two because any plaintiff's attorneys are going to be able to say, hey, they went backwards on player safety. They made it less punitive to hit the head, even though common sense says, hey, that's incidental. We're not really changing behavior by flagging incidental stuff. The same thing with the player injury. Now you might say, and I think you could argue this, that making a guy miss a whole series uh, is actually a pretty good idea. And you could couch it under health and safety. Hey, if you go down on the field, you need to be helped off. We need to give the doctors enough time to really fully evaluate why you had to go down on the field and be helped off, not under your own power. Uh, Okay. So cool. However, counter argument here, let's put on our, our attorney hat. Hey, this guy was having a serious issue, but he's such a competitor. He didn't want to go down because you increased the penalty for him to leave the game. Oh no. He just died on the field. <laughs> Lawsuit, right? Yeah. That's how, that. That's the whole reason. They are making these moves out of fear of liability and perception that the game, which would be improved from a viewability, I think playability standpoint, uh, would be would be perceived uh, as being a step backwards on safety. What if you compromise and just do it where instead of the rest of this the possession or whatever, you just do it until the next set of downs? So, like, if you get injured on second down and you they have to stop the game because of it because you're being treated on the field, you have to leave the game until whether you're on offense or defense, your team either picks up a first down or, you know, there's a punt. I mean, Tom, I'm in favor of any of that. Yeah. I just so think that's because like... I, I just think that's a reasonable way to take care of it. And honestly, I understand what you're saying about, like, well, this kid's. He's he's playing through the pain because he doesn't want to hurt his team. Kids are already doing that, and nobody's dying on the field. There are plenty of players who are have sprained ankles who are not going down on the ground and waiting for trainers to come out, and they're saying, screw it, I'm going to play through it because I'm trying to win this football game. So I'm not really that worried about that happening because it already happens. Do you think I they am- are, though? Because otherwise, why aren't we getting real change on this? Is it just the what if my quarterback Inertia. goes down and he has to miss the series thing? Yeah. 
It's inertia. It's you know, it's, nobody likes change. They like yeah, we had all these nobody likes changing anything. We had all these revolutionary ideas we were talking about last week. And when the final like list of the proposals came out, I said, Oh wow, so college football is not changing at all. I mean, to be specific about it, hey, shout out Kenny Pickett. I see you out there. They're trying to get the fake slide out the game. They saw that <laughs> once in the ACC championship game. They said, We cannot be doing that anymore.